Hey everyone, your friendly neighborhood pants is back with part two of the artifacts explained vid. If you missed part one, you can check that out over here. Though it doesn't really matter which order you watch these in since they cover completely different substats. Uh, with all that said, let's get into the video. All right, so skill specific accuracy. When artifacts first came out, people did a lot of testing for the different subs and uh, accuracy seemed to have a bit of weirdness regarding passives. It seemed that monsters with debuffs and their skill three passives like uh, Lauren or Tessarion benefited from skill 1 or 2 accuracy subs rather than skill 3 accuracy. Um, this was fixed however in the 6.0.1 patch, so behind me you'll see two tests with Jolton and Rena. The first one with 0 accuracy and the second one with skill 3 accuracy on Jolton's artifact. Um, if you don't know how accura accuracy and resistance works in Summoner's War, essentially a zero accuracy monster will never land anything on a 100 resistance monster, no matter how hard you try. Um, so my zero accuracy Jolton will never land a debuff on my 100 resistance arena. Meanwhile, the Jolton with 9% skill 3 accuracy from his artifacts will have a chance to land the defense break and dot from his passive, but will still never land the skill 1 heal block or skill 2 stun. So accuracy on artifacts acts just like one would expect them to at this point. Um, it's simply bonus stats, which is fantastic. <laughs> I think these subs are great for anyone that have skills that try to land something on the enemy, but I think they're particularly good for really stat hungry uh, monsters like Sira, Diana, Helena, the Beast Riders, Annabelle, the list goes on. Um, for monsters that want to pack on as much percent subs, speed, crit rate, it can be hard to throw on accuracy as well when you're likely prioritizing those other substats. So this sub on your artifacts can be a great way to get some supplemental stats that you aren't getting from your runes. Alright, increasing crit damage proportional to good or bad HP. I tested this using Stella because she does 7 hits, which is a lot. <laughs> I started out testing with Lucian, but he hit so hard that in many tests there wasn't a very noticeable difference between the second and third card, so I switched to Stella. Um, remember there's always a 5% variance in damage, so it makes testing with Lucian a bit more difficult. Um, I did many trials to get an average damage for each of her hits, and then made a plot that I think shows pretty clearly that the relationship is linear. That's what you see on the screen now. Um, so if you have 10% additional crit damage proportional to bad HP, for example, then when the enemy is at full HP, you're going to get no benefit. Um, but when they're at 0% HP, you're going to get maximum benefit. And then when they're at 50% HP, you'll get half the benefit. So half of 10 would be 5% when they're at 50% HP. Um, taking this into consideration, I think the best use for this sub is for nukers that do a bunch of hits like Stella, Julie, um, Beth, Han, monsters like that. On the other hand, for increased crit damage proportional to good HP, I tested again with Stella, and uh, just in case, Comptuous is weird and has it, you know, different for whatever reason, um, but I found that it was linear as well. So with that in mind, I think this sub is best for nukers with only one hit that are looking to one-shot a unit or an entire team. That way you have the maximum benefit of all the crit damage right at the beginning, because that's how those monsters work, like Xeros, Poseidon for AoE ones, um, Kali, Covenant, Copper, Odin for single target. Um, all those monsters, I think, would really benefit from crit damage proportional to good HP since they're just trying to wipe someone out right at the beginning. Um, one thing to note with those last few monsters mentioned, when comparing the substat to single target crit damage on your turn, it seems to be superior since it has higher roll potential. So single target crit damage on your turn can only roll 2-4% to compared to 4-6% to from crit damage proportional to good HP. Um, obviously, it depends on the rolls, but if the maximum roll from single target crit damage on your turn is as good as the minimum roll from crit damage proportional to good HP, which artifacts do you want to roll more? You know? So, and that's again just for these monsters in this example. Um, another thing you can compare these subs to are skill-specific crit damage subs, where there's a bit of give and take since there's diminishing return from crit damage proportional to HP, but it will apply to all skills. So, of course you want their ignoring defense skill to hit as hard as possible, but it's nice to have the other skills do more damage as well. Um, regardless, I think skill-specific crit damage and crit damage proportional to good HP are uh, superior for 
these guys compared to the single target crit damage. And uh, crit damage proportional, excuse me, <laughs> crit damage proportional to bad HP is fantastic for multi hitters, especially since it has the highest roll potential out of all of the crit damage subs. I mean, you can get a lot of crit damage proportional to bad HP, so people with a lot of multi hits can really see quite of a, a difference in damage with it. I have 21% on my Stella, and I I really like it. So again, just in case Com Twist was weird and decided that the other ones would work differently, I did test out increasing stats proportional to bad HP. And uh, I only tested increasing defense for two reasons. First, because I thought it'd be the easiest. And uh, second, because if that one is linear as well, along with the crit damage ones, then it's likely that the attack and speed substats are also going to have a linear relationship. So. Again, I used Stella, and I put 27% increased defense with bad HP onto Emma. And again, I found a linear relationship. That's the test going on behind me, and here's the plot that I got. Um, I'll show you my Excel sheet here as well. So if you know how damage works in Summoner's War, you can actually calculate it pretty easily. I made another calculator, a Stella calculator, just like my Lucian one, except it's a little more challenging because you need to know the monster's defense that you're hitting. But you see here, my Emma's defense is 1,927 at maximum HP. And at 0 HP, she would be at 2,108 if uh, we assume a linear fashion, right? So this would be with no benefit, and this is with the full 27% benefit. Which gives a different damage reduction factor and a different damage that Stella is going to deal. And in my test, that's exactly what I see, basically. So in the very first hit of my test, I'm hitting around 2,800 each time. And at max HP, my expected average Stella damage is 2,800 with the 5% damage variation. Um, similarly, at 50% HP, so I never get her to zero because I'm not dealing enough damage to get to zero, but here we see I'm at 53% HP and I'm dealing 26 to 2700, 2700 over here, 2700 over here, and my expected eight, uh, expected damage out of Stella is 2700. So it seems to certainly be a linear fashion. So that's uh, <laughs> that's how those work. So I think monsters that most benefit from increasing stats proportional to bad HP are monsters that operate at low HP. So your Garo, Miho, Trevor, Dragon Knights, just vampire damage doers in general, the uh, Water and Dark Demon, any of these guys that part of their kit is being at low HP, then, you know, give them more stats when they're at low HP. Why not, right? So another thing I should say is these stats are just okay in general. Like, they're not a dead stat like some other stats can be. Like the revive substats for the most part are a dead stat for almost everyone it's skill for crit damage another one these artifacts have so much variation it's really hard to have all four substats be good for the monster you're putting it on often it's three of them are good and hopefully you can gym in a better one and these ones are just great filler because they are never bad on anyone um, i just think they're best for those monsters that operate at low hp so Anyways, that's my thought about those. Alright, so minus crit damage received essentially subtracts the crit damage from the monster hitting you. So this one took me a while to test since I needed to find a decently sized sub to make a significant enough difference. Um, but I finally got more than 1-3% to and have a total of 11% on my galleon on the test you see behind me. So it doesn't subtract the percentage from the damage being dealt to you. It just subtracts the amount of crit damage from the monster hitting you. In other words, if a 250 crit damage Lucian is hitting you and you have minus 10% crit damage received, then that Lucian now has 240 crit damage. So it isn't nearly as good as damage reduction effects, but it's still a decent substat for tanky stalling arena defenses and support units that don't benefit much from the other artifact subs. Um, it can also help with building trap defenses and siege if you couple it with damage reduction from whatever element of the mon you're trying to trap. So 
if you're trying to trap a copper for example you could have a bunch of hp a bunch of damage uh, wind damage reduction and then on top of that some crit damage received minus all of that would help make the trap that much more successful so anyways it's just uh kind of like the increasing stats proportional to bad hp if you have it on a monster i wouldn't call it a dead sub you're getting some use out of it but it might not be as good as damage reduction from a particular element or an additional damage effect or something like that so it's not a, a premium substat to seek out but it's pretty good all right additional hp and attack bar when revived these work exactly as one would expect them to so in the test behind me you'll see my better revive my demon with 5460 hp without any artifact help then at the same hp after putting on plus 10 percent hp when revived he comes back with 6006 hp so 10 percent of 5460 is 546 and 5460 plus 546 is 6006 so i don't see any funniness in the math there um, attack bar when revived, I can't really think of a means of testing, considering I can't see the exact position of the attack bar. Um, but I think it's safe to assume it works as expected. <laughs> that said, I don't think either of these subs are good, and certainly aren't something you should purposely seek out even for passive revivers like Perna, Tyrannus, or the Water and Dark Demons, because the benefit is not only incredibly minor, but it takes up space where a better sub could be. Um, especially for HP when revived, that has almost that almost no utility. I mean, if it's on like your Tyrannus, it's not going to hurt him by any means, but it's just you could have something better for sure. Attack bar when revived has a little more utility, especially for the water and dark demons to minimize the chance of getting cut whenever they come back to life. Um, that said, the enemy Mon could just violent proc and kill them right away anyways. So I think it's rare you'll find much of a benefit from these subs. So damage dealt on specific elements and damage dealt by specific types of attacks have the largest impact in increasing the amount of damage that you'll do, but it's very specific. Essentially the formula is new damage equals the original damage times one plus the percent increase. So if you normally deal 1000 damage, but you have a 10% increase damage dealt on whatever, you will deal 1,100 damage because 10% of 1,000 is 100. So damage dealt by counterattack, attacking together, reflect damage, which isn't a thing anymore, but you might have old artifacts with it, and bomb damage all have this same effect. So in part one, I compared additional damage by attack to skill three crit damage, and we saw that additional damage by attack was superior, assuming equal rules. So here I'll do the same thing assuming equal rules of additional damage by attack compared to damage dealt on water, for example. So um, again, additional damage by attack can roll two to 4%. So let's say three max rolls would be 12%. That brings my Lucian to 14923. So I'll zero that out. Let's compare that to damage dealt on water, which can roll three to 5%. So three max rolls would be 15%. And that would be 16384, which is 1500 higher roughly than 14923. So you're getting about 4500 total damage more on water monsters with uh, damage dealt on water compared to having additional damage by attack. Um, now that's equal rules. What about if I do 12% additional damage by attack again? That was 14923. Let's do a single max roll of damage dealt on water. That is 14959. So even a single max roll on damage dealt on water does a little bit more damage than three max rolls of additional damage by attack. So I think that shows just how significant these subs are in terms of the additional damage that they provide. That said, again, <laughs> they're very specific. So when should you use them? So I think damage dealt on specific elements is best for units you use for a niche roll. So if you have a unit that's only used in a particular dungeon, for example, or if you have a specific counter to some meta defense, like uh, Susano, Stella, Megan to counter Martina, Shayna, Triana, for example, uh, damage dealt on dark or fire can really help you to meet whatever the damage requirement is to kill one of the twins before they move, because that's how that counter works. You kill one of the two twins to greatly reduce the threat right at the start of the match. So 
damage dealt attacking together, of, of course, great for Drakaru, uh, Vertihile, Rock, any of the twins. Uh, damage dealt by counterattack, I don't think is very good for a monster that's just equipped with revenge runes, though it's not horrible, but it's only getting the benefit 15% of the time. So I think it's much better if it's like a triple revenge monster, like triple revenge Verd, or for monsters with counterattack built into their kits, like uh, Fangion, Miho, Zingze. Um, bomb damage, I think, is great for monsters whose primary use is the bomb. So like Malak and Cian, not Sierra, since she has so much more to her kit than just the bomb. <laughs> so I think additional damage, decreased damage, and skill 2 accuracy is way better for Sierra. But anyways, that's how I would try to utilize these effects, since their effect is really significant. But it's, again, just very specific, so use it for monsters that you have a specific role for. So another use for these specific element damage subs that I just thought of could be for monsters you use on siege defense that historically get tanked. So Odin, for example, people will bring Rena or Camilla or some kind of water monster paired with Triana and have that water monster tank the Odin. But if your Odin is dealing a crap ton more damage on water, then it could be helpful. Not so much for uh, when they pair with Triana, which I think is common, but for people that don't bring Triana along with their water monster, um, Odin with damage dealt on water, I think could really punish them for doing that. Um, that's just a random thought that came to my head. Anyways, I think that covers all artifact subs at this point. Um, if I missed one, feel free to yell at me in the comments, or if you have questions regarding any subs, maybe a particular monster, and you think their passive might have some kind of weird effect, I can try to answer in the comments. So anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. Thank you.